my name is Phil Hoskins, Managing Director of uh, Evolution Energy Minerals. Uh, we're a graphite company in Tanzania uh, with a development ready asset and a real focus on sustainability. Uh, so we do have a development ready graphite asset in Tanzania. It's got a DFS, mining license and environmental approvals. Uh, what sets out our sets our graphite apart is uh, the flake size so, uh, and, and other graphite projects in, uh, in Tanzania as well. But 58% um, coarser than 80 mesh is a driver of uh, high revenues and high margins. Um, economics in the DFS are excellent. Uh, we're updating that DFS this uh, next quarter. Um, you'll be familiar with the graphite market opportunity and I'll touch on a few points there. Um, this morning we've just announced uh, a material uh, offtake agreement, binding offtake agreement with the world leader in uh, producing uh, expandable graphite and graphite foil, which is really exciting. Uh, we've got a, a differentiated and sustainable downstream anode strategy, which I'll talk about. Uh, we have a goal of becoming the world's first net zero carbon graphite mine, and, and I'll be accepting uh, the ESG award for energy efficiency at uh, in Daba on Wednesday afternoon. Um, from a Tanzanian point of view, uh, we're seeking to sign a framework agreement for that fiscal stability this quarter. Um, and we also recently welcomed a uh, ESG fund to our register, uh, the Arch Sustainable Resources Fund, and I think that really is going to underpin uh, our project financing moving forward. Um, just a little bit on the corporate overview there, about an $80 million market capitalisation, uh, a board that knows what it's doing when it comes to graphite. So I've had eight years experience with this project and in the market, uh, almost 250 days spent in China, understanding the applications and end user markets. Uh, Trevor Benson spent six years as the uh, exec chairman of Walkabout Resources, another Tanzanian graphite developer. Uh, Mike Bourguignon built Syrah Resources Project in uh, Mozambique. So the only guy outside China that's actually built a graphite project. So we've got a team uh, that knows uh, how to move forward here. Uh, in terms of uh, our focus for this year, uh, the top part there, executing and optimising our DFS is, is priority number one. Um, and we've got very, very clear milestones on how to achieve that. This morning's binding offtake announcement is, is the first uh, and uh, the other one will, uh, will likely fall this quarter. Uh, the framework agreement with the Tanzanian government we're expecting to execute this quarter. Uh, we're about to appoint feed engineers and we'll op optimise our DFS in the third quarter, all, all ahead of an FID towards the end of the year. But we've got two very exciting diversified downstream strategies to produce expandable graphite and graphite foil, which is your, your downstream market for coarse flake graphite um, and for anode materials, um, which is the downstream market for fines. Um, here's the numbers in the DFS, 18 year mine life. Um, there's plenty of upside to that, that uh, mine life. Uh, quite a small project, half a million tonne per annum, producing 50,000 tonnes of concentrate, um, $87 million capex uh, for a $323 million NPV. So the economics are great. Um, we've uh, done it to a bankable standard. So uh, we had two different laboratories do the full uh, DFS level variability met test work. And, and that's the critical test, uh, critical technical component of, of graphite is can you produce the, the quality of product that you say you can. Um, as I mentioned, looking to uh, optimise and update that DFS in September. It's uh, two years old at the moment. <clears throat> Tanzania's back. Uh, we've, uh, well, I've been in country for 10 years. We've been developing this project for eight years. Um, and uh, since 2017, it was obviously uh, quite challenging, um, but um, uh, certainly under the, the leadership of the new president um, and having been there six, seven weeks ago and, and talking to the ministry and the mining commission, um, they're very facilitating now. Um, our discussions on our framework agreement are advanced and, um, and that's a, a tried and tested path. We've seen framework agreements signed with three other ASX listed developers and uh, we've seen BHP investing in um, uh, in Kabanga Nickel. So uh, Tanzania is back from my point of view and um, I'm highly confident we're going to see uh, some mines getting financed in Tanzania in the next 12 months. Um, just quickly from a, a graphite point of view in the battery space you're going to see a lot of charts that look like this but this is uh, Benchmark Mineral Intelligence's view of uh, the next decade for electric vehicles for the, uh, the flow on impact of lithium ion battery demand and then what does that mean for uh, graphite demand in batteries and and when I say graphite demand in batteries, um, uh, there is uh, spherical graphite and, uh, uh, and synthetic graphite. And uh, so you've got a nearly five-fold increase in the next decade there. Um, but what's, uh, uh, what's equally as compelling as the, uh, the demand side is the supply side. And you ask yourself the question, why do the US and Europe and Japan and Australia, why, why is it listed as a strategic critical mineral? 
Um, and we know about its use in the decarbonisation and batteries and all those sorts of things. But the reason is China's dominance of the supply side. 80% um, of the raw material flake graphite supply, 100% of the purification and spherinisation to go into the batteries uh, is done in China. And then a, a rapidly growing and high value market expandable and expanded graphite, 90% of that done in China. And, and China's supply itself has, uh, has been under threat for um, environmental closures and other things. Um, so prices have been going up as a result, um, and uh, yeah, the market outlook couldn't be stronger. Um, so the big news this morning, uh, this slide talks about an MOU, but, uh, uh, but we signed the binding offtake agreement this morning. Uh, it's a group in, in China known as Yichang Xincheng Graphite Co. Uh, not a household name, but um, they produce graphite foil for Apple, Samsung, uh, the leading global electronics companies. And um, this has uh, come on the back of seven years of, of work with these guys, extensive product qualifications. Uh, we absolutely know our graphite is suitable for these very high value applications. Um, it's a three-year term, uh, 30,000 tonnes of product, which is 56% uh, of our planned production in the first three years, um, but over 70% of the, uh, the revenue because it's our coarse flake products. Uh, the, uh, the fine flake offtake agreement is, uh, is coming and um, you can expect that uh, that ex-China story I spoke about before, uh, that's going to be going into uh, Western anode uh, markets. Um, we are looking to go downstream with this group as well. Uh, we've got a great relationship with them. Uh, we're looking to um, jointly produce expandable graphite and graphite foil uh, in Europe together. So we'll be the first uh, first listed company, listed graphite company, to not just have a downstream anode strategy, but uh, to have a partnership with a group uh, that are the global leader on, and bring their technology to producing some of these high-value products in, in the Western world. Um, this is our anode strategy here. Um, obviously, we can produce concentrate in Tanzania up to 95% purity, and it's the fines that goes through the uh, uh, through the process that you see there, milling and shaping, purification to battery grade, and, and applying carbon coatings at the end. Um, we are working with a US group who uh, already are selling truckable quantities of coated anode materials to Tesla. Um, and so we know that their, their technology is commercially proven. Um, the other diver diversification there is that uh, they use thermal purification, not um, toxic hydrofluoric acid. And so the conclusion of this program in September is going to deliver anode materials that we know are suitable for um, the end users. Uh, it's going to deliver the equipment selection, the flow sheet, um, and then we'll be able to walk into um, uh, feasibility studies. But I mentioned thermal purification is the key. Non-hydrofluoric acid, um, it's much more sustainable uh, for the world we're going into. Uh, just from an ESG point of view, uh, we, we've signed up to a group called Digby. Uh, I think Digby are here, a gold sponsor, and um, do a great job at, uh, at coming in and essentially uh, auditing and, and making sure that company statements on ESG are, are real and supported. And um, we'll be resubmitting with them uh, in, in June and expecting to get to an A rating in the third quarter of this year, which is um, important for uh, the financing route we're going down. Um, you can see the list of financiers there that, uh, that like how they're going about it. Um, and they're not just about equator principles and IFC standards. There's 42 different standard setters out there that have things that interrelate with the mining industry. And, and I won't uh, go into too much uh, of the things there. We are pursuing a, a net zero carbon operation. We hope to make that declaration later this year. And the other, the other thing there is that the entire board will stand for re-election uh, and also cancel any performance-based remuneration if we have a material breach of our ESG policies. So that's how seriously we take it and, um, and that's why we wanted to align uh, our interests with, with that of the, uh, the investors and where we're getting our money. Uh, so just to sum up, um, it's a development-ready graphite asset, as I said. It's high margin driven by the flake size. We've got our mining licence and we're basically in execution mode at the moment. Um, our ESG commitments are very important from the financing uh, and from an offtake point of view. Uh, I mentioned the Arch Sustainable Resources Fund is our 25% major shareholder with significant additional capital to deploy towards the project. Um, the offtake partner, uh, so YXGC, they are selling to Apple, Samsung, they are, their industry standing can't be challenged and um, uh, seven years of hard work and culminating in this morning's announcement, which is fantastic, inclusive of that downstream element. And finally, that, um, that anode program, no, no hydrofluoric acid, um, very sustainable with, uh, with thermal purification. So, yeah, thanks everyone for your time. Enjoy the conference and feel free to come past the booth if you want to learn more.